Well, Rocky and Bullwinkle's attempts to find a rocket fuel to take them to the moon has certainly raised a fuss, especially on the moon itself. We moved to the dark side just to get away from those peeping toms in their telescopes. Now they're going to come right on up. We must stop them! So the Moon Men selected two of their hardiest adventurers and sent them down to Earth with only one mission, to stop our heroes from finding the formula. And so when a hypnotized Bullwinkle recited his recipe for Grandma Moose's fudge cake, even to a sleeping audience... Can I scrooge him now, Gibney? Yes, Clyde. Scrooge him now. As the mysterious ray struck Bullwinkle, he was instantly frozen solid, stiff as a board. So that's what it was like to be scrooged. Where do we put it? Let's take it home in our flying saucer. The moon men had scarcely left the room when Boris woke up. Go on, go on. I didn't miss a word. Where did he go? Oh, there he went. Hey, you, come back with my moose. But he knows the formula. We, we got to take him along. Don't be foolish. You missed the brains of the outfit. The brains? Who's that? The squirrel. He knows the formula, too. He does? Do I look like a liar? Don't answer. You go get him. I'll mind your moose for you. The moon men dash back to where Rocky and Natasha were still dozing. All right, everybody up. Ooh. It's all right, lady. They're just plain ordinary moon men. Which one of you is the brains? I, I am. am. Because if you are, we're going to scrooge you. He is. She is. Which one is the squirrel? That's me. Where's Bullwinkle? We're taking him with us. You too. Come on. Bye-bye, darling. Have a nice trip. It looked bad, but Rocky's number wits were hard at work. Okay, we'll go, but it does seem a shame to miss the party. Uh, party? Sure. The government always throws a big party for visiting spacemen. With, with paper hats? And noisemakers? Yeah. Well, maybe we could wait a little while. Of course we need our entertainment, Chairman. Who's he? My pal, Bullwinkle. Oh, that's easy. We left him right... He's gone. Sure enough, the wily Boris had stolen Bullwinkle and was at that moment heading for a lonely house high on a hill. He can't go far. That moose was scrooched. Scrooched? How long did you scrooge him for, Cloyd? The dial said eight. Eight what? I don't know. It's either eight hours or eight years. Well, Bullwinkle was still frozen solid and Boris couldn't loosen him up. Then exactly eight hours later... You're conscious. Uh, no, I'm Bullwinkle. Where am I? This is your new laboratory. I am your new assistant. Shall we get to work? Well, uh, let's see. I guess so. Uh, two cups of flour, one teaspoon salt. Are you taking all this down? Yes, yes. Uh, could you speak a little louder? I'm rather hard of hearing. Oh, certainly. A testing, one, two, three. Little did Bullwinkle know that Boris's hearing aid was in reality a powerful shortwave transmitter and that every word he uttered was instantly heard in another country far away by a band of sinister spies. Don't fail to see our next episode, Monitored Moose or the Carbon Copycats. <laughs> <laughs>